Puss in Boots by Charles Perrault. Once upon a time, there was a poor man who was very old and very ill. He called his three sons to his bed and said, All my life I have been a miller, grinding wheat to make flour and carrying it to market to sell. I am not rich, but I can give each of you a gift. I give my eldest son the mill. The eldest son was happy. It was a very good gift. And to my second son, I give my new donkey. The second son was happy. He would work with his brother and the donkey would carry their sacks of flour to market. And to my youngest son, said the old man, I give my cat. The young man was sad. He knew his father loved him. Why had he given him nothing but a cat? What good is a cat, said the young man. A cat is the best thing in the world, said a voice. The miller's son looked around, surprised. Who's that, he asked. Me, said the cat, and I really am the best gift of all. How can you be? You're only a cat. A very clever cat, said Puss. Do as I tell you, and you will be rich. What do you want me to do, asked the young man. Make me a hat, a jacket, some big leather boots and a large bag, said Puss. The young man was puzzled, but he did what Puss told him. Puss dressed himself. He put on the big leather boots, his jacket and his fine hat. He slung the bag over his shoulder. Goodbye, he said. Wh where are you going, asked the young man. You'll see, said Puss, and left. I know nothing will happen, said the miller's son when Puss had gone. What can a cat do? Puss picked a lettuce from the garden, put it in his bag and went off into the woods. He put the bag on the ground, wide open, lay down beside it and pretended to sleep. Soon a rabbit came along. He sniffed the air. There was a lettuce nearby. He smelled it. He saw it and jumped into the bag to get it. Puss sprang up, pulled the string and closed the bag. He carried the bag to the royal palace and asked to speak to the king. The king was with his daughter, who was the most beautiful princess in the world. Your majesty, said Puss to the king, I have brought you a nice big rabbit, a present from my master, the prince of Carabas. The, the prince of where, said the king? Carabas said Puss. It's a small place. So small it is not even on the map, but it is very rich, and so is my master. Never heard of it, said the king. But uh, anything is possible. Every day, Puss caught a different bird or animal. A present from my master, the uh, Prince of Carabas, he told the king. Must be a fine man to give me all these animals, said the king. And why not ask him to visit us? Puss knew that his master could not visit the king and his beautiful daughter. His clothes were much too worn and torn. One morning he told his master, I want you to go for a swim. The young man was puzzled. But he went to the river, took off his clothes, jumped in and started to swim. Puss hid the clothes under a large rock. Just then, Puss heard the sound of horses' hooves and carriage wheels. The king and the princess were coming down the road in their carriage. Puss ran out in front of it and shouted, Help! Help! My master, the prince of Carabas, has been robbed! 
They stole his clothes while he was swimming. The king sent a servant to the palace to bring fine clothes for the cat's master. The fine clothes suited the young man. He looked like a handsome prince. The princess invited him to sit beside her in the carriage. Meanwhile, Puss had run down the road to a field where some farmers were working. Who does this land belong to? he asked them. To a giant ogre, said the farmers. He has magic powers and can change into any kind of animal. He frightens our children. He steals our food and makes us work like slaves. Puss thought for a moment. If I do something for you, will you do something for me, he asked the farmers. The king's carriage is on its way here. If he asks who all this land belongs to, say, the Prince of Carabas. And what will you do for us, asked the farmers. Kill the ogre, said Puss. Oh, he'll kill you first, warned the farmers. But Puss was on his way to the ogre's castle and did not hear them. The king's carriage came along the road and stopped by the farmers. Who, who does all this land belong to, asked the king. Our master, the prince of Carabas, said the farmers. The king looked at the young man. I can see my daughter likes him, thought the king. And he has lots of land and servants. He might make a good husband for the princess. If only he had a castle. Puss walked bravely towards the ogre's castle. How could he kill an ogre who could change into any animal in the world? Puss went slowly into the castle. saw a gigantic, ugly ogre. He shivered in his boots. I have heard that you can change yourself into any animal in the world, said Puss in a frightened voice. That's true. I'll show you, said the ogre. And he changed himself into a lion. Puss jumped onto the table in fright. Change back, please, he called. The ogre changed back, and Puss came out of his hiding place. Well, it's not so hard to change into a large animal, he said, but I don't think you could change yourself into a small one. Of course I can, said the ogre. Well, as small as a mouse, impossible. Impossible, roared the ogre. Watch! and he changed himself into a tiny, squeaking mouse. This was just what Puss wanted. He pounced on the mouse and gobbled it up. Soon afterwards, the king's carriage arrived at the castle. Puss was waiting outside. Oh, there's your servant, said the king. And this is my master's castle, said Puss. The castle of the Prince of Carabas. The king was astonished at the beautiful castle. Well, the young man who owns this castle can certainly marry my daughter, he thought. And so the miller's son and princess were married. And at the wedding, the happiest guest of all was Puss in Boots.